How do you think about efficient handling of that kind of trajectory based scaling with those kind of categorized characters? Yeah, I mean, how unfrench can I be on the podcast? Look, it's capitalism and your responsibility is to shareholders, right? And you do you can do right by people and the transitions, but you know, sometimes you get someone who realizes that they need a better leader, that they're going to learn from a better leader above them and they're ready for it. And that's awesome. And that's what you should try to do when that moment comes. And, and sometimes for everybody, it makes sense for them to just go find another gig where, where they've grown at your company and they can now do another stage. It's not the stage that you have. And it's okay. Like, you, you know, you can, I think as adults, you can have these conversations. I think where you get in rough waters is when you don't give the person a chance. I, I call that like putting the person in a box where you have this image of them from when they joined and, you know, the company hits some kind of rough patch and you, you don't give them some chance at like seeing if they can grow out of it. I think the human thing to do is to give them the chance, but you're a founder and you've hired all these other people. And if one of your function leads isn't scaling, yeah, you might give them three months, but pretty quickly you got to realize, hey, it's not working. Because next thing you know, you might have, you know, if you wait like 12 months and then you make a new hire and that person on ramps, next thing you know, you've wasted 18 months of potential momentum at, at your company. And that's that's dangerous. And I, I think I always, this is like not a super podcast, like, like happy, happy, uh, makes me look great kind of statement. But I think there's great hiring and there's great firing. And I think founders, one of the things you realize about founders is first time founders, they don't realize they have to be great at firing. They just think they have to be great at hiring, but you have to be great at realizing when your talent's not working out and identifying that and working with them and moving on. And initially founders don't do it early enough. And then they learn their lesson a few times and then get really good at it. By the way, it's a really interesting thing. People think about like, oh, it doesn't sound good on a podcast. What founders love the most and what makes them like people the most is actually the honesty, the not BS, selling your company. You know, it's all about mission and vision. That doesn't sell. That makes people dislike you. The truth like that is what makes people like you. My question to you is, I suck at firing so much so that I've had my COO fire people because I don't want to do it. How, what does being good at firing mean? And how can I get good at it? It's like having a breakup. No one ever likes doing it. I don't think you truly get good at it. And I don't think you ever have a playbook where both sides come out of it like super happy humans. That's just, that, that's just reality. So the first thing you got to realize that when I say good at, I actually don't mean the conversation with the other person. I mean, identifying at the right point in your company that the odds of success of that individual and the role is no longer right for the business. Because if you can look at someone in the eye and, and you're convinced yourself that it just doesn't make sense for the business, you've given a shot, to a shot for them to improve and prove themselves and they haven't, you're just doing what's right for the business and they will understand that and they will respect you for it even if they don't like you in the moment and they don't feel like it's fair. Because they're shareholders, they joined a startup, they understand the risk, they understand it's, it's a very, very difficult job. I just think that's how you have to treat it, right? There's a human level where, you know, how you deliver it, how open you're in communication, that those things matter. But at the end of the day, it's, it's about what's doing right for the business. Probably the biggest mistake is not giving feedback. Oh, oh right? no, no, that no, is, I disagree with you. Don't give feedback. That's a terrible thing, oh, JD, because they'll always argue with your feedback. Oh, no, I mean, before, meaning it, it shouldn't come out of left field. The person should know that their performance is not quite meeting the bar that you have anymore, like a couple of months before. If it comes out of, say in your head, you're just like, oh, it's not working out, it's not working out, it's not working out. And then you show up in one-on-ones and you're like, high five, let's go watch like a soccer game. You're the best. You, you know, then when you deliver the news, that's, that's just not, that's not going to feel good at all. Yeah. In the moment, no, you've made the decision. There's no argument, right? If you've made the decision, you know, they try to argue with you, you're like, look, listen, like, I'm doing what I think is right for the business. This is my role to do what's right for the business. I've thought about it. This is, this is what we're doing. I'd like to work with you on like a transition plan that works.